What our citizens must know is this. America faces a disease that is fatal and spreading, and this calls for urgency, not panic. It calls for compassion, not blame. And it calls for understanding, not ignorance. It's also important that America not reject those who have the disease, but care for them with dignity and kindness. Hey, historians. You just saw part of President Ronald Reagan's speech from 1987, honoring the American Foundation for AIDS Research. During the 1980s, as Cold War fears gradually started to fade, a new kind of threat began to surface. This one was closer to home more personal and equally upsetting, the AIDS epidemic. This public health crisis transformed the decade, shifting attention from geopolitical tensions to the fight against a global health emergency. Today, we'll explore how the scientific understanding of AIDS evolved, how the federal government responded to the epidemic, and how the American public reacted to this crisis throughout the 1980s. One of the main themes we'll discuss is how a lack of information led to heightened fears and stigmas surrounding the epidemic. So in the guided viewing activity, you'll create a public health newsletter that could have been used to educate people in the 1980s about this disease. All right, let's get into it. Let's begin by discussing how the scientific understanding of AIDS evolved throughout the 1980s. In 1981, doctors first began discussing a disease characterized by a weak immune system that made patients vulnerable to infections that wouldn't normally be a threat. We now know this disease as AIDS, or Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. But in the early 80s, it was a medical mystery. Scientists and doctors couldn't figure out where the disease came from or how it spread. Early on, many scientists thought AIDS spread through casual contact, like touching or sharing food, causing widespread panic. Others incorrectly believed it was confined to certain groups, particularly the LGBTQ community and African Americans. These groups had higher numbers of reported cases, so scientists assumed the disease only affected these communities. These misconceptions led to intense prejudices that unfairly singled out these communities. A turning point came in 1983 when French and American scientists identified HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus, as the cause of AIDS. This crucial discovery shed light on the seriousness of the disease, revealing that without treatment, HIV progressively weakens the immune system, leading to AIDS, a condition where the body can no longer defend itself against common infections and diseases. These scientists also clarified that AIDS was not limited to certain communities, but could affect anyone. More importantly, scientists discovered that HIV spreads through bodily fluids, not through casual contact. This knowledge was the first step in slowing the spread of the disease and ending the stigma surrounding it. By the late 1980s, the AIDS crisis had escalated into a global emergency, affecting millions worldwide. In response, the World Health Organization, WHO, launched the Global HIV Program to coordinate the international response. This initiative united resources, knowledge, and strategies from various countries, including the United States, to combat the epidemic globally. Why do you think it's important to have international collaboration during global health crises? International collaboration brings together a diverse range of health experts and perspectives and plays a key role in boosting funding for research. The United States, as a member of the World Health Organization, played a significant part 
in this collaboration, eventually leading to the development and approval of AZT in 1987, the first drug to treat HIV. The approval of this treatment marked a crucial step forward. It demonstrated that medical research was advancing and providing a foundation for the development of more effective and accessible treatments in the future. Pause here to complete page one of Mia's public health newsletter in your PDF. Now that we know how scientists' understanding of AIDS evolved throughout the 1980s, let's look at how the government responded to it throughout the decade. As AIDS first began making headlines, the response from the federal government was initially very slow. In the early 1980s, there was very little government funding or dedicated programs to understand, prevent, or treat AIDS. Key health agencies, like the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, were constrained by limited budgets. This lack of federal funding restricted their ability to conduct in-depth research and develop strategies to combat AIDS effectively during these crucial early years. This lack of research and understanding led to the creation of policies based on incomplete or incorrect information. For example, in 1985, the belief that AIDS was confined to LGBTQ communities led the Federal Drug Administration to make a controversial decision to ban LGBTQ people from donating blood. This policy, which was not fully overturned until 2023, caused public outrage. It wasn't until 1987, when President Reagan made his public address about AIDS, that the government shifted its approach to the epidemic. Pause here to read a few more excerpts from Reagan's speech and predict how it changed the government's strategies to combat AIDS. After Reagan's address, the government began to divert more resources and attention to the crisis. This included launching public information campaigns that aimed to educate the public on the causes of AIDS, methods of prevention, and the importance of compassion towards those affected. Additionally, funding for AIDS research saw a substantial increase. This allowed for more research into the disease and laid the groundwork for future medical breakthroughs. Regardless of this change, many Americans criticized the government for responding to the crisis too late, at a time when misinformation was already significantly affecting public perceptions of the disease. Pause here to complete the second page of the public health newsletter. By the time the government began to take action to combat the AIDS epidemic, many Americans, influenced by fear and misinformation, had already formed negative perceptions and stigmas about the disease. In the early 1980s, AIDS was often labeled gay cancer. This misconception led to intense prejudices toward the LGBTQ community. Think back to what we learned about the fight for LGBTQ rights in the 1970s. How might the stigma surrounding the AIDS epidemic have impacted the ability of the LGBTQ community to continue advocating for their rights in the 1980s? The misunderstanding of the AIDS epidemic led to discrimination and social isolation for those affected particularly within the LGBTQ community. AIDS patients often faced exclusion from workplaces, schools, and even healthcare facilities, fueling a climate of fear and isolation. This widespread discrimination made it difficult for the LGBTQ community to maintain the progress toward social acceptance and visibility that had begun in the 1970s. Also, the media played a critical role in shaping public perception. In the early years of the epidemic, 
sensationalists, and often inaccurate media coverage contributed to public fear and misunderstanding. A crucial turning point came in 1984 when a teenager named Ryan White contracted HIV through a contaminated blood transfusion. His story gained national attention and made people see AIDS differently, proving that the disease could affect anyone, not just certain communities. As the stigma surrounding AIDS slowly began to subside, those heavily impacted by the epidemic, including the LGBTQ community, mobilized to provide support and care. They played a critical role in providing healthcare services, support networks, and education about the disease. In 1987, the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, or ACT UP, was formed. This organization advocated for the increased research, expedited drug development, and access to experimental treatments, using protests and activism to bring attention to the urgent needs of those affected by the disease. Artists, writers, and celebrities, such as Freddie Mercury, also used their platforms to raise awareness and challenge societal attitudes. For instance, Angels in America, a groundbreaking play by Tony Kushner, powerfully depicted the impact of AIDS on the American experience, especially within the LGBTQ community. Its portrayal of the struggles faced by those living with AIDS brought greater visibility and understanding to the epidemic, helping to humanize those affected and challenge prevailing misconceptions. The AIDS epidemic, initially clouded by stigma and fear, ultimately inspired a powerful movement for understanding, advocacy, and change. Pause here to complete the last section of the Public Health Newsletter. You know, it's been said that when the night is darkest, we see the stars. And there have been some shining moments throughout this horrible AIDS epidemic. In these final words of his public address on AIDS, Reagan highlights the dark consequences of misinformation and misunderstanding, but also the shining moments of collaboration, education, and advocacy that helped gradually calm the panic and break down the stigmas that surrounded the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s. This moment in history highlights the power of collaboration in shaping a healthier, more empathetic world. We'll see you in the next lesson, historians. Until then, keep making history. Hey.